plant water relations introduction the physical processes involved in the absorption of water are imbibition diffusion and osmosis absorption and movement of water theories of water translocation are root pressure theory capillary theory cohesion tension theory transpiration mechanism of opening and closing of stomata significance of transpiration water is essential for life since it is a medium for various biochemical reactions in the cell the cell component like protoplast nucleus etc are active only in the hydrated state the semi permeable nature of the membrane is lost when dehydrated maintains shape and turgidity of the cell it is required for fertilization pollination dispersal of fruits and seeds from the soil water is absorbed by the roots then by osmosis it goes to the stem and leaves plant utilizes some water and the rest returns to the soil via atmosphere by the process called as transpiration physical processes involved in the absorption of water the absorption of water by plants is known as water uptake the initial step in the water absorption is water imbibition the outer layer of the root hair wall imbibes water molecules and then these enter into the cell sap the physical processes involved in the absorption of water are imbibition diffusion osmosis etc imbibition absorption of water by hydrophilic compounds without forming solution the substances absorbing water are called imbibents the imbibents do not dissolve in water the characteristics of imbibition are liquid absorption swelling up that is increasing in volume heat release exothermic process and development of pressure examples are imbibition of seeds in water and a wood piece kept in water absorbs it and swells common observation during rainy season wooden doors and windows imbibe water and swell diffusion diffusion is the movement of ions atoms or molecules of solutes liquids or gases from the region of their higher concentration to a region of their lower concentration till an equilibrium is attained osmosis is movement of solvent through semi permeable membrane or it is the movement of water through semi permeable membrane from higher to lesser concentration osmosis was first observed by abbe nollet in 1748 Osmosis helps in establishment of an equilibrium in concentration on both sides of the membrane. From pure water due to osmotic diffusion a solution is formed. From dilute solution hypotonic by osmotic diffusion concentrated solution or hypotonic is formed. Types of osmosis on basis of direction of osmotic movement of water. Endosmosis absorption of water by the cell. Exosmosis loss of water by the cell it makes the cell flaccid by osmosis water enters the xylem vessels through the root hair the water is conducted to all the parts of the plant by transpirational pull osmotic pressure op the osmotic pressure is defined to be the pressure required to maintain an equilibrium with no net movement of solvent where two solutions of different concentration are separated by a semi permeable membrane which the solvent molecules can move through but the dissolved particles solute can't the solvent will move from the lesser concentrated to the more concentrated solution to attempt to equalize the concentrations the pressure that must be exerted on the solution to stop this influx of solvent is called the osmotic pressure that is Osmotic pressure is the pressure that must be applied to a solution to prevent the inward flow of water across a semi permeable membrane. Tertiary pressure is the internal pressure developed in a cell due to absorption of water and osmosis. In a saturated cell, the tertiary pressure is maximum. Tertiary deficit (TD) of a cell. Loss of tertiary from cell wall due to loss of water. Exosmosis is the tertiary deficit of a cell. maximum tertiary pressure minus actual tertiary pressure is equal to tertiary deficit which is equal to the diffusion pressure deficit dpd which is also equal to the water absorbing ability absorption and movement of water the pathway of water through the root 
Mainly water enters the root through the walls of the root and the epidermal cell of the root tips. From the epidermal cells, the water passes through successive rows of thin-walled cortical cells and then through the cells of the endodermis. After passing through the endodermis, water moves into the xylem tissue ducts. In the xylem ducts, its general direction of movement is upward. Path of water in root tissue during absorption. This diagram shows the path of water in root tissue during absorption. The diagram shows the transverse section of root. In this, various parts of the root are shown such as root hair, plasma epidermis, cortex, casparian strip, endodermis and vessels that is xylem. Soil water associated with soil particles. Also inorganic ions present in the soil are shown. The surface area of the root is enormously expanded by thousands of root hairs and symbiotic mycorrhizae. The root hairs are in direct contact with water and dissolved inorganic ions held in tiny spaces between the soil particles. Water and ions can travel into the root by the apoplastic pathway moving between cells and along the cell wall or by the symplastic root moving from cell to cell through plasmodesmata. A molecule or the ion can also move through combination of these two roots that is apoplastic as well as symplastic. Mechanism of water absorption. There are two methods of absorption of water, active absorption and passive absorption. Active absorption. The mode of absorption in which the water is absorbed due to the activity of the root itself, particularly root hairs, is called active absorption. Shoot or transpiration does not play an active role. Water moves along the osmotic gradient. There are two theories of active absorption, osmotic theory and non-osmotic theory. Active osmotic absorption depends on osmosis. Active osmotic absorption of water. Entry of water from dilute hypotonic soil solution into the concentrated hypotonic cell sap of root hair and epidermal cell occurs due to endosmosis. There is progressive increase in the relative concentrations of the cell saps from epidermis towards the xylem of the root across the cortex, pericycle and endodermis, xylem sap being hypotonic to others. From epidermis to the root system, water moves by cell-to-cell -cell osmosis through the living cell of the root cortex, endodermis and pericycle. This movement is along the osmotic gradient. Cells with higher DPD draw water from the cells with lower DPD during cell-to-cell -cell osmosis. Active osmotic absorption of water does not need ATP energy. Active non-osmotic absorption occurs against the osmotic gradient and uses ATP energy. This mechanism is not controlled by osmosis. Passive absorption. There is no expenditure of metabolic energy. Hence, this process is called as passive absorption. Living cells of roots play passive role in water absorption. Soil enters through root hairs due to suction force, DPD. The suction force, SF, is created in the leaf cells due to loss of water in transpiration. This SF is transmitted to the cells of the root. Hence, water enters root hairs due to SF. Osmotic movement of water is not involved in the process. Passive absorption takes place even if roots are completely cut off, that is, through end of the stem. Major quantity of water is absorbed through passive mechanism. Theories of water translocation Movement of absorbed water through the vascular system from the lower end of the xylem in the root to the upper end of the xylem in the leaves is called ascent of water, that is, translocation of water. The water enters the cortex of the root hair through the soil. From the cortex, it enters the xylem through the pericycle from where the upward movement of the sap takes place. To raise water from the ground level to the top of the tallest tree 400 feet height requires pressure of about 13 atmospheres. Thus, it is evident that water is not pushed to the top of the tall trees by atmospheric pressure. So, to explain the mechanism, different theories were put forward. The three important theories are root pressure theory, Capillary theory, cohesion theory or transpiration pull theory. Root pressure theory. According to this theory, the osmotic pressure of the cell sap of the root hair is higher than that of the soil solution, which is low. 
Due to this, water osmoses into the root hair from the soil and ultimately enters the root system. The conditions favored rapid absorption of water from the soil and if the rate of transpiration is low, this water is accumulated in the roots and develops hydrostatic pressure in the roots and it is called the root pressure. If the stem is cut near the soil surface, sap in the xylem flows out through the cut end for many hours. This phenomenon is called bleeding or exudation. Objections Magnitude of root pressure is quite low which is unsuitable for tall trees. Even in the absence of root pressure, ascent of sap continues. Root pressure is not universal because it is not found in all plants. It is not observed in plants growing in cold, drought or less aerated soil. Root pressure is usually negligible during summer when transpiration is rapid. Capillary Theory According to this theory, xylem elements that is tracheids and vessels function as the fine capillary tubes. Water rises up in the capillaries due to adhesion force, attraction between water molecules and walls of the xylem elements. This adhesion forms a meniscus in which the water tends to climb up the side of the xylem elements. The smaller the diameter of the xylem elements, the greater is the lifting force of the meniscus compared to the amount of water to be lifted. Objections The theory was not accepted because capillary or adhesion force alone cannot raise the water column to the height of 400 feet in case of tall trees. Considering the diameter of xylem elements, the water will not be raised to the height of 1 meter also. Cohesion Theory This theory was given by Dixon and Jolie in 1894. According to this theory, the ascent of sap is due to transpiration and cohesion and adhesion of water. Mutual attraction between water molecules is called cohesion. This forms a continuous water column throughout the xylem vessels of the plant from the top to the root. The magnitude of this force is very high, about 350 atmospheres or bars. Therefore, continuous water column in the xylem cannot be broken easily due to the force of gravity or any other means of resistance. According to this theory, evaporation of water from the leaf to the atmosphere results in a decrease in the water potential of the epidermal cells which are in direct contact with the atmosphere. The water lost from the leaf cells is replaced by the water moving from the xylem elements in leaf veins, that is the xylem elements. Due to this pattern of water movement, a tension is created in water in the xylem elements of the leaves. Thus, transpiration tension draws water upwards by a force from the roots and continuity of the water column is maintained by cohesive force present amongst the water molecules. Transpiration Loss of water from aerial part of plants in the form of vapor is called as transpiration. This is due to the higher concentration of water in the leaves than the air outside. Therefore, water leaves out of the leaf through the stomata. Transpiration is of three types, cuticular, stomatal and lenticular. Cuticular transpiration Cuticular transpiration involves loss of water in the form of water vapor through the cuticle present on the surface of the stem and leaves. Cuticle is a non-cellular covering of cutin and wax that lies on the exposed surface of the epidermal cells. Cuticular transpiration depends upon the thickness of the cuticle. The rate of cuticular transpiration is inversely proportional to the thickness of the cuticle. About 3 to 10 percent of total transpiration occurs through the cuticle. Cuticular transpiration takes place throughout day and night. Lenticular transpiration Lenticular transpiration involves the loss of water in the form of water vapor through the lenticles that is the small pores present on the stem and fruits. Hardly 1% of the total transpiration occurs through lenticles. Lenticles are absent in leaves. Lenticular transpiration takes place throughout day and night. Stomatal transpiration involves loss of water in form of water vapor through the stomata present on the leaves. Stomata are openings usually confined to the epidermis of the leaves. The number of stomata is usually greater on the lower surface of the leaves. About 90 to 97 percent of the transpiration takes place through the stomata. It occurs only during sunlight when the stomata are open. Structure of stomata 
The stomata are very minute apertures usually found on the epidermis of the leaves. The stomata may be found in all the aerial parts of the plant. They are never found on its roots. Usually the stomata are found scattered on the dicotyledonous leaves whereas they are arranged in parallel rows in case of monocotyledonous leaves. Typical stomatal apparatus consists of three parts: guard cells, stoma that is pore, and subsidiary cells. Guard cells. The stoma, stomatal pore, is surrounded by two modified epidermal cells called as guard cells. The guard cells are always living, uninucleate, and contain chloroplasts. The wall of the guard cells near the pore is thick. The outer wall is thin, elastic, and semi-permeable. The guard cells may be kidney-shaped or dumbbell-shaped. In monocots, the guard cells are dumbbell-shaped, and in dicots, they are kidney-shaped. Stoma, stomatal pore. It is the small opening formed due to specific arrangement of guard cells. Usually, the term stoma stands for the stomatal opening and the guard cells. Subsidiary or accessory cells. The epidermal cells surrounding the guard cells of the stoma are known as accessory or subsidiary cells. They help in guarding cells in the opening and closing of stoma. Stomata opening and closing. The guard cells become turgid. Their thin walls get extended and thick walls become slightly concave so that the stomatal aperture opens. On the other hand, the guard cells become flaccid when they lose water. Their thick walls revert back to the original position, resulting in the closure of the stomatal pore. The mechanism of the closing and opening of the stomata depends upon the presence of sugar and starch in the guard cells. During daytime or in the presence of light, the guard cells of the stomata contain sugar synthesized by their chloroplasts. The sugar is soluble and increases the concentration of the sap of guard cells. Due to higher concentration of the cytoplasm of the guard cells, the water comes to them from the neighboring cells by osmosis and they become turgid. With the result, the stomata remain open. In the night or in the absence of light, the sugar present in the guard cells converts into starch. This starch is insoluble and this way the cell sap of the guard cells remains of much lower concentration than those of the neighboring cells. And the neighboring cells take out the water from the guard cells by osmosis, making them flaccid and the stomata closed. The conversion of sugar into starch during night and vice versa in the daytime depends on the acidity, pH and alkalinity of the cell sap of the guard cells. During daytime, carbon dioxide is used in the process of photosynthesis. The cell sap becomes alkaline and the starch converts into sugar. Significance of transpiration Transpiration is a very significant process. It has both beneficial and harmful processes. Beneficial effects Translocation of water Absorption and conduction of minerals Cooling effect Optimum turgidity Harmful effects Large amount of water absorbed is lost and also energy is wasted. It causes water deficit and plants can suffer from injury due to desiccation.